What's up guys? Today I'll be talking about how I was able to become a full-time YouTuber. So I get a lot of questions every single day asking, Jade, how do you make videos full-time? Jade, how are you able to work with some of the biggest brands? Jade, how did you build a company out of your following? And basically I'm going to reveal all of that today. So I'm a huge visual learner and I basically found out the other day that a butterfly goes through multiple phases. I'm joking, I learned that like in preschool. But essentially, you know, a butterfly before it's in its full form goes through its egg stage, then it goes into a caterpillar, then it goes into this cocoon thing and it bursts into its full form. And what I realized is because a butterfly goes through multiple stages before it's in its mature stage, I want to talk about my YouTube metamorphosis, right? How I morphed from a kid making videos online to a full-time creator before the age of 19. So let's get started. So the first phase is going to be called my hobby phase. I started YouTube in 2009. That's right. I've been making videos for like nine or 10 years at this point, And it's insane. I've been inconsistent throughout my journey, which you will hear pretty soon, but at this stage, I call it my hobby stage because I was just making videos for fun. I had a channel called Kitty Films 8. No, you can't look it up. It's not up in the internet anymore, so don't try. But I made like a hundred videos on that channel when I was a kid and I was playing with dolls. So Kitty Films 8 was my films of kitties, literally like cats, like little pet shop cats. Do you guys remember what I'm talking about? If you were a kid in the thousands, there were these like little pet shop bobbleheads where you could play with animals. And it was really my only way to have a animal contact because I was allergic to pets and I had no friends. So there we go. Like I mentioned, I started my YouTube channel when I was a kid because I literally had no friends and I wanted to just express myself to something that wouldn't judge me and reject me, the camera. So yeah, I was making films on this channel. I posted quite a lot, but I think the key with this is I didn't make money. I didn't even know you could make money. I was introduced to the YouTube platform by my dad. My dad was like, check out this platform, YouTube. I think it could be really cool. And at this point, I don't think anybody was solely monetized. So no one really cared about views. Everyone cared up just about making good videos and that's exactly what I did as a kid. I remember I didn't have money for a camera, but at that stage it was acceptable. You don't need expensive equipment. I had my webcam I just set up and edited my videos on iMovie. And sometimes I would just upload like non-edited videos. Like that's how you know YouTube was at its early stages. What I didn't know is although I wasn't making any money, I was still around 20% of the way there to being a full-time creator. I think it's so important to have the hobby stage in your career because you need to enjoy it because it's gonna be a long journey to make it a job or monetize it. So I was happy to say in my first years on YouTube, I just was making videos for fun. It allowed me to really have the longevity and patience even with slow growth. But through the matters of evolution, I go to phase two in around 2013. So at this point, I was in middle school and I called the second phase my obsession phase. It was my obsession phase because I was literally making videos on a schedule. Prior to this, I was making videos dispersely whenever I had time. And in this 2013 year, I was like, I'm on a filming schedule. So I would upload once a week, basically my entire middle school, I would try my best to upload. And I remember the reason being is because I saw creators like Michelle Phan, Bethany Moda start to like get really popular on YouTube. I remember this so vividly. Bethany Moda, a beauty YouTuber, comes out with a collection with Aeropostale. And Aeropostale, at least back then, was a, such a big brand. I literally wore a Aeropostale hoodie with my Miss Me jeans and some Vans. Like that's how you know I was in middle school. It was an iconic look, but you know, I remember a YouTuber comes out with a clothing line what? That's the first example of how a social media influencer was able to create merchandise and monetize through her influence. And I think I saw that at like 12 or 13. And I was like, I need to be her. So I decided to make beauty videos. And at this time, I started a new channel called Jade Delicious Joy. So I moved from Kitty Films 8 to Jade Delicious Joy, which is actually this channel you're watching right now. All my old videos are on private, but I have a few reaction videos if you wanna see it here. It's quite embarrassing. I remember at this stage, I wanted to invest in a camera. I think by this point of YouTube, people were editing and making it way more high production. And I felt really insecure about my webcam videos. So my dad gives me a Sony Next 5. This is my first DSLR camera and I learned more skills on iMovie. I'm pretty sure my videos were absolutely shit, but I did try to at least upgrade the quality because at this point in YouTube, you couldn't just upload a shit video. You needed to actually upload a video if you wanted to get views. And I think this goes into my third part, which is essentially like I didn't make money, but I knew I wanted to get views. And I think this is when I started to get obsessed with the numbers in a sense of not trying to please a crowd, but just trying to reach as many people because I just wanted to be the clone of Bethany Moda. <laughs> so I remember when I was in middle school, I was super dedicated to make content. 
and I was basically like 40% there. Like what I didn't know is although I wasn't making money, I was still on the track record to monetize my brand. I really believe that it's important to go through like a phase, like the hobby phase or the obsession phase, because it allows you to just have the patience and pace yourself before you're monetized. So at this point, not making money, but I was okay with it. All right, so now we were caterpillars. It's time to blossom. Stage three is at my gaining traction stage. And if you're posting videos consistently for like two or three years, you're bound to have one video that gets views. So I was posting once a week, like I mentioned, and I remember switching from like beauty content to like business content because at this time I was like, I don't want to be Bethany Moda anymore. I want to be the Gary Vaynerchuk of the world. So I switched my interests. And it's something to say that it's totally okay to switch your niche based on your personal interest because you need to make content that's authentic to you. So I did. I made a video about how to grow on social media because I was obsessed with Instagram at the time. And that was my first video that literally got like a quarter million views in a month. And that's never happened before in my entire career. Like I would have gotten like a thousand or a hundred views and it would just stop there. But this was around 2017 when I finally hit my first break. Keep in mind, guys, I started to make videos in like 2009, 10, and it took seven years before I made a video that went viral. And I really think it's so important to understand that because a lot of people look at Emma Chamberlain and this other circle and just expect that result. But that is basically luck. You know, you can't control that outcome. What you can't control is being consistent and showing up. So at this point, I was starting to invest in my equipment. I bought my first 4K camera, the Sony a7R II. I started to invest in editing tools and Epidemic Sound, which is actually the sponsor of today's video. So Epidemic Sound is a music library for anyone to get good quality songs and tracks to add to their video without getting copyrighted. What I really love about it is you can literally go on their albums and playlists and find songs. They're not like cheesy. Like, you know, with the copyright music that's like really jingly and really cringy, Epidemic Sound provides way better tracks than that. And what I love is the community that's behind it. I became pretty good friends with some people on their team, and I'm happy to say that we're partnering on today's video. So if you'd like to try Epidemic Sound today, go check out the link in the description box. I highly recommend it. It's made my personal videos that much better and it's copyright free. So it's actually able to monitor monetize my videos. Like literally prior to this, that video that got like a quarter million views in a month, right? I used a mainstream song on the radio. So you bet I was copyrighted and I wish I knew Epidemic Sound existed back then because I lost my coin. Anyways, thank you Epidemic Sound for sponsoring today's video. And now let's dive in back to my metamorphosis. Why do I keep hitting the whoa? So like I mentioned, I got my first viral video, but it was inconsistent. I only got one viral video and then every single other video just got like a few thousand views, but I did reach my first 10,000 subscribers, which meant I was able to monetize. So YouTube or Google AdSense gave me a check every month based on the viewers I was getting. So if you guys want to guess how much money I made in my first check, it was a whopping $162, but I was so excited. Like I made my first hundred bucks on YouTube. And I think from there, my channel really started to grow. This was not a dependable income at all, but I would have to say I was enjoying my time in combination with coaching calls, which I was offering to my audience and merchandise I was offering also to my audience, I was able to make my first $1,000 on YouTube. And it was really amazing because I basically wanted to make money through YouTube and AdSense, but I also added a component, which is called B2B or business to business, where I was selling my service to other businesses. So I knew I didn't want to depend on YouTube income alone. So I basically extended my portfolio to offer services to other companies and growing their social media. So at this point, I wasn't living on YouTube alone, but I was definitely able in combination with other income streams, which you can watch over here if you want to know how I make money. Money, I was able to monetize my brand and at least say I was making money through videos, which I was. This is literally where I want to scream at you guys because so many people don't make it to this next phase. Like so many people maybe get monetized on YouTube, but they're not able to make it into a living. Maybe you're someone who's gotten maybe one video that popped off, but ever since then it's been radio silence. Or maybe you're someone who has made money, but it's just not a dependable income for you to live off of. My oh my. Guys, I have something to tell you. You cannot give up. You guys are literally only 60% on the way there to being monetized. And I would have to tell myself this when I was 16, that's when I was really starting to gain traction. And at this point I wasn't able to go full time. Like I was still going to school, but what I remembered is you have to keep pushing because if you keep pushing long enough, you will reach stage four, which was what I call going pro. So what happened was from three to four, there's a huge 
difference. This is literally the make or break segment that literally most people give up upon because you don't realize how close you are until you look back. Essentially, this is what happened. I started to get views inconsistently. Some videos got like a million views, some videos got like a thousand. And this inconsistency isn't really able to be dependable. So I was starting to really find other ways to generate income. But what I did know is because I love making videos so much, ever since I was a kid, I was passionate and determined to make it a full-time job. I ended up dropping out of school so I could focus. I know, shocker. But I didn't drop out of school with a lot of money. I'm pretty sure I had only like a thousand dollars in my bank account and I moved to LA alone. Long story short, I probably should have thought it through, but I just said, fuck it. I'm going to dive into it full time. Every single month, I started to increase my income just a little bit from a hundred bucks a month to 200, 500, then a thousand. By the age of 17, I think one of my peak income months was when I started to make 10K a month. And that was really freaking weird because I'm used to being dead broke. So I started to travel, invest in other people, like an editing team. And I started to really spend income as a business. So not just buying an apartment and a new car, but I use my money to reinvest into my business so I could create more content and reach more customers. When I was 17, I started to expand my consulting agency. So I started to consult bigger and bigger brands on their Instagram. I think at this point I was making a full-time income. I'm not going to lie though, like some months I made absolutely zero dollars and others I made, you know, over 10,000. So at that point it was still super inconsistent. I think at this point I was making money full-time and I was living and paying rent on my own at the age of 17. And the illness thing though is looking back I don't think I felt like I was full-time I felt like I wasn't making enough money because like I mentioned some months were super high and some months were super low and I just couldn't figure it out I really felt pressure to make revenue in certain areas I remember at this point of time in like when I was 17 a lot of people were making online courses and I think at this point I wasn't just I wasn't confident enough to do it. And I knew people were making millions of dollars selling courses, but I just, I wanted to put something out I was proud of. Like, as you can see in my timeline, I never started YouTube to make money. That was not my intention at all. And throughout every phase, I was never gonna make a video just to make a video. And I'm not gonna lie, some days I did that and I was not very proud, but I definitely know, like, I knew my underlying purpose with YouTube is to deliver content that's educating and entertaining, whether it's through my dolls, through my makeup videos, through my business content. I basically realized I'm not gonna be that desperate ho. I'm not gonna make money just to make money. I want to be very purposeful and intentional with my revenue. Like I want to enjoy what I'm doing. So I sacrificed making more money to enjoy and slow down and take time to find myself as a 17 year old. And so I did. I traveled the world a little bit more. I went to Bali. I went to Europe a few times. And I think this leads me to where I am today, which is kind of like my scaling period or my next steps. I've been on YouTube for like apparently 10 years at this point because I started in 2009 and I was always super inconsistent in the beginning and I made it more serious, obviously, when I was in middle school, but I don't know. I, I'm getting kind of emotional just because now I like really care about how much money I make. My mindset has always been to reinvest in the company. So I would never take out money if I couldn't make sure I paid my team well. And I really value just giving back. So I don't feel there yet. For the past few years, all the dollars I made went back into my team, my editors, my managers, my writers, and everything like that, because I genuinely can't do it without them. And I know the value of reinvesting capital into your business but I think a part of me also feels still under accomplished like I feel like I haven't done enough and it sounds crazy to say but I struggle with that feeling and at the same time I try to motivate myself to think of crazy ideas so if you guys want a little little recap currently in my business I went from consulting on Instagram to consulting on YouTube TikTok so I basically shifted that agency part into new platforms that I was more familiar with and obsessed with from there I started my company called x8 media where we produce educational content and the entrepreneurship and tech niche. From there, I am going to build out my incubator program where I will manage and help more creators kind of do the same journey I've been doing. We're gonna help launch fund creators to get them to a full-time income as well. And I'm at the early stages of this and I announced this in my like recent video, but even now till this day, although I have this big vision and huge plan for X8 Media, I still struggle with it. And I still feel like I'm not enough. Like even though I'm full-time, I'm not fully happy with my content and my success. Success. And I'm trying to stop doing that because what I've realized is you're never going to be happy. Everyone thinks once I make enough income, once I hit this amount of subscribers, I'll be happy, but it doesn't exist. And it's so frustrating because I wish it did. I remember as a kid, I just wanted to make great videos. And then I did that. And then when I was older, I started to want to make it full time. And then I did that. And now I'm at the place where I need to accept myself and I have to make no excuses for being happy with myself. And it's really hard in a way, and it's I know it sounds pretty privileged and conceited to say like, oh my God, I still am not enough. I'm very thankful for everything I've had, but I also feel like I have a long way to go. And I'm still struggling with that. 
I guess the point of this video is you're not that far off. There were so many points where I wanted to quit. And if I told myself, maybe you're not making money now, but you're halfway there because you need to go through those steps. You need to go through those hardships in order to get where you are today. I think more and more people would keep going with YouTube and more and more people would persist because this is the whole point of this video. You have to go through these phases and a lot of these phases don't make any money. So don't be discouraged if you're at phase one because you still have to go through these phases and it doesn't disqualify you at all from becoming a full-time creator. And even if you're full-time, I'm sure we all feel this burden where we feel like we still aren't enough. So I guess my second point is just to be happy with yourself at any stage and enjoy the process because that's advice I fucking need right now and I hope we can do this all together as a community. Garmin Nation, I really love you so much. Like we recently hit 365,000 subscribers and I can't thank you enough. I really do appreciate you guys and you really mean the world to me. With that being said, shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. We have officially morphed into a full-grown butterfly, flapping our wings, thriving. And I hope you guys enjoyed this YouTube journey. And I love you. I'll see you guys in the next one. And comment below if you have any questions. Bye.